Hi, in today's meeting, we will discuss the statutory basis and prescriptive period for the refund of erroneously or illegally collected internal revenue taxes. And in the last part of this video, we will discuss the process for claiming a refund with the BIR up to the filing of petition at the Court of Tax Appeals and the Supreme Court. Let's begin. In taxation, what do we mean by refund? It partakes of the nature of an exemption and is strictly construed against the claimant. The burden of proof is on the taxpayer claiming the refund that he is entitled to the same. When money is paid to another under the influence of a mistake of fact, it may be recovered. Sections 204 and 229 of the National Internal Revenue Code provide for the refund of erroneously or illegally collected taxes. Refund of erroneously or illegally collected taxes. Section 204 provides that the commissioner may refund or credit taxes erroneously or illegally collected or received, penalties imposed without authority, refund the value of internal revenue stamps when they are returned in good condition by the purchaser, and in the commissioner's discretion, redeem or change unused stamps that have been rendered unfit for use and refund their value upon proof of destruction. The provision further provides that no credit or refund of taxes or penalties shall be allowed unless the taxpayer files in writing with the commissioner a claim for refund or credit within two years after the payment of the tax or penalty, provided, however, that a return file showing an overpayment shall be considered as a written claim for refund or credit. Section 204 applies to administrative claims for refund, which means that if the taxpayer seeks to recover erroneously or illegally collected taxes, written claims refund must be filed with the BIR within two years from the payment of the tax. Meanwhile, Section 229 applies to judicial claims refund of erroneously or illegally collected taxes. The provision states that no suit or proceeding shall be maintained in any court for the recovery of any national internal revenue tax alleged to have been erroneously or illegally assessed or collected until claim for refund or credit has been duly filed with the commissioner. In any case, no such suit or proceeding shall be filed after the expiration of two years from the date of payment of the tax or penalty, regardless of any supervening costs that may arise after the payment. To synthesize, the taxpayer must file a written claim for refund stating a categorical demand for reimbursement before the commissioner within two years from the date of payment of the tax. Under Section 229 of the NIRC, there is no exception to the two-year prescriptive period. The language states that no such suit or proceeding shall be filed after the expiration of two years from the date of payment of tax or penalty regardless of any supervening costs that may arise after payment. Why is the filing of a claim with the BIR a condition precedent? Ang sagot, this is in observance with the doctrine of exhaustion of administrative remedies. The law only requires that an administrative claim be priority filed, that is, to give the BIR at the administrative level an opportunity to act on said claim. In other words, for as long as the administrative claim and the judicial claim were filed within the two-year prescriptive period, then there was exhaustion of administrative remedies. Is payment under protest necessary in order to obtain refund of internal revenue taxes? The answer is no. In case of internal revenue taxes, payment under protest is not necessary for the recovery of erroneously or illegally collected taxes. Section 229 of the tax code is very specific on this point when it provides that a suit or proceeding for tax refund may be maintained whether or not such tax penalty or sum has been paid under protest or duress. Does the Court of Tax Appeals have the jurisdiction if the Commissioner of Internal Revenue fails to act over tax refund claims? Section 7 of Public Act No. 9282, an act expanding the jurisdiction of the Court of Tax Appeals, provides that the Court of Tax Appeals shall exercise exclusive appellate jurisdiction to review by appeal in case of inaction by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue in cases involving disputed assessments, refunds of internal revenue taxes, fees, or other charges, penalties in relation thereto, or other matters arising under the National Internal Revenue Code or other laws administered by the Bureau of Internal Revenue where the National Internal Revenue Code provides a specific period of action in which the case of inaction shall be deemed a denial. This means that while the commissioner has the right to hear a refund claim first, 
if he fails to act on it, it will be treated as a denial of the refund. And the Court of Tax Appeals is the only entity that may review this ruling. Taxpayer need not wait for the commissioner to act on its administrative claim for refund. Can the Court of Tax Appeals acquire jurisdiction over the case if the taxpayer did not submit the complete documents with the BIR? A distinction must be made between administrative cases appealed due to inaction and those dismissed at the administrative level or at the BIR due to the failure of the taxpayer to submit supporting documents. If an administrative claim was dismissed by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue, Due to the taxpayer's failure to submit complete documents despite notice, then the judicial claim before the Court of Tax Appeals would be dismissible, not for lack of jurisdiction, but for the taxpayer's failure to substantiate the claim at the administrative level. Meanwhile, when a judicial claim for refund in the Court of Tax Appeals is an appeal of an unsuccessful administrative claim, the taxpayer has to convince the Court of Tax Appeals that the Commissioner of Internal Revenue had no reason to deny its claim. It thus becomes imperative for the taxpayer to show the Court of Tax Appeals that not only is he entitled under substantive law to his claim for refund, but also that he satisfied all the documentary and evidentiary requirements for an administrative claim. It is thus crucial for the taxpayer in a judicial claim for refund to show that its administrative claim should have been granted in the first place. Consequently, a taxpayer cannot cure its failure to submit a document requested by the BIR at the administrative level by filing the said document before the Court of Tax Appeals. And here now are the steps for claiming tax refund or credit at the BIR up to the Court of Tax Appeals and Supreme Court. Number 1. In claiming for refund of erroneously paid taxes, the taxpayer must file an administrative claim for refund within two years after the payment of tax. If the BIR denies the claim for refund, appeal the denial to the Court of Tax Appeals within 30 days from receipt of the final decision of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. If the Commissioner of Internal Revenue does not act on the claim and the two-year prescriptive period is about to expire, Appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals by filing a petition for review before the lapse of the two-year prescriptive period. It has been settled in jurisprudence that this does not mean that the taxpayer must await the resolution of its administrative claim for refund before seeking judicial recourse since doing so would be tantamount to the taxpayers for feature of its right to seek judicial recourse should the two-year prescriptive period expire without the appropriate judicial claim being filed. If the two-year period is about to expire, then the taxpayer must immediately file a judicial claim at the Court of Tax Appeals. Next, in judicial appeal, the case shall be raffled to a Court of Tax Appeals Division. Thereafter, if the decision promulgated by the Court of Tax Appeals Division is adverse to the taxpayer, file a motion for reconsideration or new trial first. Why? The filing of a motion for reconsideration or new trial before the CTA Division is an indispensable requirement for the filing of an appeal before the Court of Tax Appeals Unbank. Failure to file such motion for reconsideration is a cause for dismissal of the appeal before the Court of Tax Appeals Unbank. Thereafter, a party adversely affected by resolution of the CTA division on a motion for reconsideration or new trial may file a petition for review with the Court of Tax Appeals Unbank within 15 days from receipt of the decision. If the taxpayer is not satisfied with the decision of the CTA Unbank, what is his remedy? Well, a party adversely affected by a decision or ruling of the Court of Tax Appeals Unbank may file with the Supreme Court a verified petition for review under Rule 45 of the Rules of Court, which shall raise only questions of law. And that ends our discussion. I'm confident you have already mastered the process for claiming refund of erroneously or illegally collected taxes. Make sure to apply the concept in your answers. So bye for now. See you in our next video. God bless!